Hey, Dr. Romano, how's it going? What's going well? What can I do for you? Oh, uh, well, I really couldn't figure out this Facebook study group problem, and I'm about to blow my brains out. Can't have you blow your brains out, young lady. We just cleaned the office, so come over here and let's have a look. What the problem involved was treating one methyl cyclohexene with iodine chloride. And I wanted to simply know how many mechanism arrows could be drawn to form the intermediate iodinium ion. Very simple. Let's draw it. And as you can see, I draw iodine chloride, but notice one side is positive and one side is negative. The chlorine is the negative side and the iodine is the positive side. The cycloalkene is gonna act as a nucleophile, which means it's gonna attack the more positive part, i.e. the electrophilic portion of the reagent. So what I'm gonna do, watch the arrows. I think you can do that. I'm gonna reach out, grab the iodine. The iodine electrons moves in, that's two arrows, and then boom, this bond breaks, and that's all there is to it. So as you can see, it took me three arrows to get to the iodinium ion. Notice that the iodine can either come in from the bottom face or the top face. Let's pick one, let's pick the top face. So as you can see, I'm gonna put both of these as wedges. So there's three arrows, but if you wanna just finish it out with me, you might say, well, now what happens once we form the iodinium ion is the Cl minus is gonna now attack this intermediate. Now, notice I've put two different colors here to show you that the bond strength is different. Those two bonds, it's like having two arms, my right arm and my left arm, certainly you would agree they're not the same strength. I could punch much stronger since I'm right-handed with my right arm than with my left arm. This bond here is gonna be stronger and this is weaker. We don't need to get into the theoretical considerations of that, but it's weaker. Um, because it's weaker, that means that I can attack this, meaning the more substituted carbon more readily. So if I attack you, now notice that this is going up, so that means the chlorine is gonna be coming in from the lower face, one, and then boom. And as you can see, you would have got that. And of course, you could have also got the enantiomer of that. And if we look here, without putting any stereochemistry designator on it, we would just simply call this one chloro, two iodo, one methyl cyclohexane. I want you to be very careful of this type of problem where we ask you how many mechanism arrows are needed to form something. This is, becomes, this is seemingly a very common question now that the dad and the oat sort of favors. I'm gonna place more of these in the upcoming issues of the Destroyer books. But at least this will wet your beak and we have one in our latest edition of the Destroyer on how to do a, a little mini synopsis of a mechanism and how many arrows are needed to form either a product or an intermediate. All right, I hope this helps and I'll see you in study group if you got any questions on it. Um, ask me and I wrote out a nice solution um, in tonight's question. All right, good day to you, bye-bye.